Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Ashwin. Are you ready? Uh, yes, sir. May I share the screen, sir? Yes. Good evening, everyone. We will start now, whatever the number is. Uh, please indicate in the chat box if you can hear me. If I'm audible, please write in the chat box so that we can start. Okay, am I, am I visible also? That's wonderful. So we're waiting, people are joining. So Priti, whenever you say, uh, I think we can start it in another three, four minutes, Ashwin. Yes, sir. 
you can start sharing your screen. You've already got the screen, yes. <clears throat> so first we'll have the case presentation and then we'll uh, discuss the questions that were put. And first of all, I will welcome you all to webinar yet again. It is in a long break after scrubs because I think you were busy with your exams and I didn't want to disturb you in between. We had a webinar and then quiz questions. Now this one, uh, we'll have regular webinars for the other uh, examinees who will be appearing for the MS or who will be going for further exams. So, and also the DNB exams that are remaining. Okay, so please mention and indicate in the chat box uh, if there is something very specific you would like to be covered before we start, I'm taking those five minutes so that others can also join. Since the notice was very short, so we do understand that people might take a little while on a Sunday or an evening. So do indicate in the chat box if there is any specific topics that you would like uh, us to cover. So I'll create a, a little curriculum for you. And we have planned a curriculum for the whole year this time so that there's no confusion. So you'll have these regular classes where you can, you don't have to worry, the entire course would be covered in one year. Now, do indicate, do indicate in the chat box uh, if there is, there are some specific topics that you would like to cover and I'll be very happy to answer questions if you have any absolutely spontaneous questions. Approach to obstructive jaundice, Pragya Varma, that uh, I'll try and take it today. Uh, then uh, Rahul, uh, can we, this, the, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Rahul Sarma, can you take operative steps classes? Okay, we'll take one, one session operative. And uh, we have 35 people on YouTube. We are we're giving it a uh, try today for all of you. We are trying to create a YouTube channel, which will be 24 seven for surgery so that you can have questions and answers happening. And we'll have some very special programs for all of you. Absolutely we wanted, wanted to make it a absolutely free interaction so that you can all learn it. And also uh, the, the Gurukul Scraps uh, videos would be available soon on an app that was being created. So I think it is now ready. So you will get all the videos of this Scraps plus Scraps in the past, plus all the scope courses that I did, scope I created. And I stopped it because um, I started Gurukul Scraps and we wanted it to be totally <clears throat> a political radiological images and biostats web hub that will be taken next like section and basic principles i think that i've already covered varun so you can look at some of my old videos also we'll put the entire thing uh, in an app and all of you would be um, happy to see have the app on your phone i mean something that you can just watch whenever you want ashwin i think you can start with that i've taken the inputs you can keep writing your inputs and uh, <clears throat> I'll request uh, Dr. Supriti to take a note of it. We'll create a curriculum and we'll do twice a week classes on the YouTube channel so that all your course is covered as quickly as possible. So we can start. Ashwin, can you switch on your camera yes, also? Yes. Uh... You have a problem with your camera? I think that's fine. Okay. I'm audible, sir. You're audible. Now you can please start. Yes, sir. Good evening to one and all. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Ashwin. I'm presenting a uh, what scenario on a uh, clinical case. My patient is a 50 year general man who's a driver by occupation, resident of New Ashwin. Delhi. Ashwin, am I audible to you? Yes, Ashwin. sir. Yeah, so it's not a what, it's a clinical case presentation. So don't give a new definition to it. It's a case presentation like you'll have in the, yes, sir. this is an exam case. Start presenting now. Yes, sir. Uh, 50 years gentleman who is a driver by occupation uh, came to a uh, resident of New Delhi, came to us with chief complaints of uh, growth over the right inguinous scrotal region since the past two months and ulceration over the growth since past one month. Patient was apparently all right two months back when he developed a swelling over the right side of scrotum, which was insidious in onset but rapid in progression. 
<clears throat> initially the swelling was two uh, two by two centimeter in size, but rapidly progressed to current size of ten by ten centimeter over the past two months. He also developed an ulceration over the swelling one month back, which was associated with discharge, which was a uh, clear fluid, which is <clears throat> which was clear fluid mixed with blood at times. The discharge was foul smelling in nature. Uh, the swelling became painful after the development of the ulcer. Uh, pain is continuously present and is moderately severe in nature. Uh, he had undergone he has history of uh, undergoing insufficient drainage in a private clinic two weeks back, following which the size of the ulcer increased to the present size of seven by five centimeter. Uh, he also developed associated fatigueness and tiredness. Uh, there is history of weight loss as suggested by the patient, but it's not documented. Uh, and uh, patient is a uh, uh, BD smoker. He used to smoke. 12 BDs per day for the past 15 years and chews tobacco in the form of quit for the past 20 years. There is no history of any high risk behaviors other than smoke, uh, smoking tobacco. There is no history of any trauma to the inguinoscrotal region, no history of fever, no history of, such of any distant metastasis, uh, no history of constipation, urinary or fecal incontinence. There is a patient is not a known case of diabetes mellitus or hypertension. Past history, patient, is, uh, patient does not have any history of TB or TB contact. Uh, there is no history of any surgery in the past and no history of any sort of exposure to radiation in the past. Patient consumes mixed diet and has a normal sleep pattern. Uh, there is no family history as so of cancer-related death in the family. At the end of uh, history, I would like to summarize my case as a 50-year gentleman who came with complaint of rapidly progressive ulcerative growth in right inguinal scrotal region with foul smelling discharge associated with weight loss and fatigue. Patient consumes tobacco in the form of BD and quit. There is no bowel and bladder complaints and there is no associated comorbidities. Now, uh, the problem with uh, your summary is reflecting in your history. I was trying to listen to your history. It started as a swelling which ulcerated yes, sir. and somebody did an incision drainage and then it started fungating. That's It's not that it increased in size. An ulcer cannot increase in size or you decide what it was. That was one thing which I thought I would. So let's go to the first slide. So I'll take history first, then I'll go to the examination. Growth over now, 50 years, gentlemen, is fine. Growth over right inguinoscortal region. Now, the complaints are never in the form of inguinoscortal region, they would be in the form of groins. The patient yes. does not know about inguinoscortal region. It is your examination finding. Okay, important point so yes. that you can you can avoid that confusion. Now, when you are saying growth, what do you mean by ulceration? So, what where are you going wrong here? So, if you go verbatim by your history of present illness, patient had a swelling first. So, I would have put it this way: a swelling, uh, or a rapidly increasing swelling, or in uh, or slowly growing swelling, or whatever, in the right groin for the last two months. That's what you're saying. Yes. And yes. ulceration over growth. Now that is paradoxical. Now ulceration in that swelling for the last, it's not since for the last. Okay, Since is absolute. Yes. When you know the okay. date. Otherwise for the last. So roughly, you cannot be sure. So there is a swelling over the right groin for the past two months and ulceration of this swelling for the last one month associated with rapid increase in size for the last one month. So that will make it more, you know, authentic and solid so that you are comfortable. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, yes, move to the history of present illness. Now you read it and you will know what I was trying to tell you because I've made it out of your history only. So you're saying there was a swelling. Yes, Why? How can you make it different in your presenting complaints? Okay, so be careful. Yes, about yes. That. Uh, growth is something yes. very, very specific. It can be ulcerative. It can be ulceroproliferative. So we don't know. Patient is apparently well. There's nothing like, all right, it's okay. You can write all right, but I'm improving it. The, as the patient says, he was apparently well. That also is important. Who is saying it? So as the patient says, he was apparently well two months back when he developed a swelling over the right side of the inguinoscotal region now. 
you're saying scrotum now. You can't be changing your stance every every time. So either sir, initially it started out in the sir initially it started out in the scrotum sir and no, then it progressed. Then you go back to the chief complaint. So it was a scrotal swelling which ulcerated and later on extended into the inguinal region. So it's wrongly put. That is what I was trying to tell you. So my whole story changes again. Chief complaints are a swelling over the right scrotum with ulcer for the last two months with ulceration and rapid increase and extending onto the upper part of the groin for the last one month. So that would become more authentic. Otherwise, your chief complaints and history of present illness are not falling into place. Next slide. So there was a swelling over the... Sometimes the cases are tricky, right, Ashwin? They may not be straight forward. So you may have to use the terms very, very, very carefully. So the patient was apparently well two months ago when he no, no, developed a swelling over the right scrotum, which was insidious in onset. Now, two months is too short a history. So it's not insidious anyway. All right, you say insidious in onset and rapid in progression. Okay. Initially, it was around two by two centimeters, approximately, correct, in size, but rapidly progressed to approximately 10 by 10 centimeters, which means a rapid, rapid increase. He also developed ulceration of the swelling one month back, which was associated with discharge, which is clear fluid at times, mixed with blood. But here you have not described that it extended into the inguinal region. Although you mentioned it's an inguinal sort of swelling. Mm -hmm. So history can be, uh, you know, very informative and at the same time can be very confusing unless you are able to convey through the history. It may not be very, very handy, very useful. Now, he also developed ulceration. That's perfectly fine. And when you're saying it was foul smelling in nature. You can, you know, it was clear fluid, often mixed with blood and foul smelling. That's it. Next slide. Now you're repeating. Okay. This story should have been finished there. Now I would have just finished with the story. It was a painless swelling which became painful with the development of the ulcer. That can be one story. Pain present continuously. Now is continuously present is again a wrong way to put it. All history of present illness is in past tense. So all mistakes are being shown. You are not given any time to prepare a case. That is an advantage for you. So that you can go see a case and make a presentation. So it's as good as a live presentation. So these mistakes will happen. Nobody will correct it for you. So patient pain is... Pain was continuous and moderately severe. He underwent, he had underwent his wrong English. So he underwent, he was treated by incision and drainage at a, at a private clinic two weeks back, following which the ulcer increased in size to current size of 7.5, 7 to 5 centimeter. I have not yet heard from you when did it extend into the inguinal region. So that will be covered here. Now, the patient has associated his rubbish. Two months is too quick. The patient has associated fatigue which you mentioned as fatigueness is not a term. Fatigability and tiredness. So fatigue and tiredness is fine. Patient is it's too short a history to record the weight loss. So that is all right. And is it is all over the place. You just you could have divided for your own cons consumption. You could have divided it into, you know, the uh, personal history separately, and you could have made, made your life a little easier with that. Smokes beady that comes out of nowhere. He's a tobacco. He can, he's a tobacco smoker in the form of BD, twelve per day. That's fine, and also chews tobacco for the last twenty years. Okay, next slide. I'm only correcting for the benefit of everyone. There is more. There are more corrections I may still be missing. Everything cannot be seen very quickly. Now, there is no history of any high-risk behavior. There is no history. You know, there is no history suggestive of high-risk behavior. And you mentioned here, I have noted it down. There is no history suggestive of high-risk behavior except smoking BD. Smoking BD is not a high-risk behavior. High-risk behavior is very specific. What do you mean by high-risk behavior? 
multiple sexual partners, IV drug abuse, <clears throat> uh, what is it that you want to find out? One is you can you want to look uh, for the HIV, you want to look for human papilloma viruses. Uh, in fact, you want to look for any IV drug induced hepatitis, etc. Those infections, right? So you should cover it up broadly. And smoking is not high risk behavior. Smoking is a risk history, all right. How is smoking relevant in your case? Uh, sir, uh, nicotine, uh, nico uh, consumption of uh, nicotine in the form of smoke or uh, uh, tobacco is associated with increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma, sir. No, but tobacco is associated with squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity. Uh, the patient yes, is um, at the lower end. But smoking is still okay. relevant. Firstly, on account of, yes, one possibility, it's a risk factor for causing head and neck cancers, oral cavity cancers, that is true. It also predisposes to some other cancers. It's not always oral cavity. So one should not think it to be just oral cavity. Smoking also takes care of the lung. I mean, all those. Basically, it is a it contributes to the, uh, to the malignancies. That's what you're trying to say. In the form of nitrosamines, which are produced from nicotine. But at the same time, alcoholism is also an important history. Okay? And um, there is no history. I am finding that history is little, uh, you know, you have put things, too many things together. So you're not able to make sense between two lines. That's why I was trying to suggest you. So you can always split it. And at least the examiner is able to hear and understand what you're saying. Not a known case of diabetes mellitus or hypertension. Next slide. That was all right. Now, what is the significance of exposure to radiation in the past? Uh, sir, it also radiation exposure, uh, maybe in the form of environmental exposure or as part of therapeutic exposure, can predispose to malignancies, sir, especially squamous cell carcinomas. Many malignancies, not just squamous cell carcinomas. Yes, there is a high risk yes, of carcinomas developing, um, breast carcinoma, head and neck cancers. Uh, and you're right, environmental exposure usually happens in what kind of situation when they're close to some uh, nuclear reactors, etc. Is it usually the high dose or the low dose radiational exposure which causes risk? Uh, sir, high dose uh, radiation will kill the cell, sir, and thereby prevent causing any malignant conversion. But on the other side, low dose uh, radiations are associated with high risk of malignant conversion. Uh, well, you were trying to answer in a hurry. Maybe that's why you missed out. The low dose uh, radiation can stimulate oncogenesis. High dose can ac actually will be ablative. So it's a therapy. So it will destroy the cell. So maybe it will not produce, but that is not completely correct. That is in a case where you also mentioned very rightly that previous exposure to radiation can, for therapeutic purposes, can lead to uh, second, second, secondary cancers happening. So they are radiation-induced cancers. Can you name some of them? Yes, sir. So Strievotrenae syndrome seen in breast carcinoma. There is angiosarcoma in the peripheral periphery of the radiation field, sir. <clears throat> Very good. And, okay. uh, and, and sir, lymphoma, radiation from lymphomas are associated with high risk of head and neck cancer, sir. Correct. And you see also in phyloid series that you must be observing, which we were running for the last few months, uh, there are some uh, mutations like P53 and TPN mutation where it was 53 TPN, 53, uh, where these are individuals where radiation can lead to malignancies, carcinomas or sarcomas developing. So they can develop. So sometimes the radiations are not given to these. And P53 mutation does increase that risk of secondary cancers happening and others you have mentioned. So it is important to describe and divide them into environmental low dose and Therapeutic high dose, but usually it's a low dose radiation, which is low dose radiation stimulates oncogenesis. The high dose is ablative, so it won't, it would actually work as a therapy. All right, let's move. So be careful about putting your history the correct way. It's, it, you did a good job of it, but we can make it better. See, now here comes your personal history. Personal history is incomplete here. Hmm? We need to, you mentioned about the diet, very good. Appetite comes here again. Sleep comes here, which you mentioned. 
addictions come here and also speech i mean sleep appetite bowel bladder yes. bowel bladder habits yeah they would fall in here and especially you have a patient with a scrotal swelling which became uh, the mm, you know the inguinal scrotal swelling later on and ulcerated also so it will be necessary to um, to to be clear on that aspect put them together so it is always better sleep usually personal history would be a new um, i mean your appetite diet addiction sleep and you know bowel and blood habits let's move i think we now now you mentioned about no history suggest you cancer related deaths in the family suppose there is no cancer related death in the family but there is somebody already on treatment for cancer wouldn't that be important so therefore this is a you know not a very smart way to put the family history across no family history suggestive of any cancers or cancer related deaths both will be covered that will throw a question for the examiner and you will get a question to answer what are those familial cancers that will be relevant for you Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Lieferman syndrome associated with P53 mutation. Very good. And, uh, <coughs> and sir, Gardner syndrome, which is associated with uh, keratoconus against skin manifestations. Very good. What uh, else? Uh, and sir, there are melano uh, 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 melanoma associated syndromes, sir, which are again uh, producing skin lesions, sir. Right, and uh, you also have Muir-Torr Muir syndrome. Where you have sebaceous cyst, squamous cell carcinomas, and GI malignancies, or so you can have Excellent. that answer coming. If you throw that, uh, you know, situation to the examiner, so that the examiner is prompted into asking you that question. Let's move to examination now. Mm, summary, sir. Um, examination now. Summary, I have seen. You can change it now accordingly. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> patient was examined in a well lit room after taking consent. Patient was conscious. Uh, patient is conscious, conscious alert, uh, cooperative, and well rendered time, place, and person. The uh, Karnofsky's, uh, Karnofsky's uh, performance status score was seventy. Um, patient was clinically patient is clinically febrile. Uh, pulse is eighty two beats per minute. Measured in uh, right radial artery. Normal volume, uh, rhythm, and uh, uh, the vessel wall was not palpable. Uh, the blood pressure of the patient was 116 by 84 millimeters of mercury measured in right arm in sitting position with arm uh, placed in semi supine semi prone position uh, respiratory rate was 14 per minute uh, abdominal thoracic uh, hydration and nutrient status was of the patient was adequate uh, bmi was 22 uh, there is no pallor ictus sinuses clubbing fetal edema or generalized lymphadenopathy <clears throat> examination of the inguinal region after taking uh, Proper consent. Uh, patient was examined in standing position and then in supine position. Uh, on inspection, uh, scrotum was on, uh, scrotum on left side is pushed away to, uh, towards the left side. The overlying skin in the uh, left scrotal side was edematous. Uh, there is loss of uh, rugosities. However, no growth or ulcer could be found on the left side. Uh, there is a large ulcer of proliferative tissue of approximately approximately 10 by 15 centimeter present in. The the right inguinal scrotal region extending into the right lower abdomen. Uh, the edge of the lesion appears averted. Uh, there is a uh, slough pr present in the base of the ulcer. The right test is appears necrotic and lies in the floor of the ulcer. Uh, <clears throat> on further inspection, the penis is pushed towards the left side. There is a dorsal bend in the uh, penis. Surrounding skin in inguinal region and right thigh appears edematous and discolored. Uh, police is in situ. However, there is no scar, sinuses, engorged veins, visible peristalsis in the swelling, in the lesion. Uh, Expansal confirmables is absent. Uh, no other visible swelling in penile, perineal, or femoral area could be appreciated. On palpation, uh, the left side of scrotum has thickened edematous skin. However, no interaction could be appreciated. Uh, left testis could not be palpated, separa palpated separately due to overlying edematous skin. Uh, right inguinal scrotal region has ulcerative proliferative lesion of 10 by 15 centimeter in size. Uh, it extends from base of the scrotum inferiorly to right lower abdomen 
uh, the level of ASI is superior. It is tender and warm on touch. Uh, the edges of the lesions are firm to harden consistency, and the uh, duration of the lesion extends beyond the margin in uh, all the areas. The uh, edges bleed on touch. Uh, the right testis is gangrenous, friable, and partially shrubbed out, present in the, present in the floor of the ulcer. Uh, the median raphe present between either side of scrotum appears to be intact. Uh, right inguinal, uh, superficial inguinal nodes are palpable. Uh, and there were two in number, firm to hard in consistency, fixed, non-mobile, uh, non-tender, uh, and there were no uh, palpable lymph nodes on the left inguinal region. On DRE, the symptom was uh, normal and there were uh, no growths, could be uh, felt. Systemic examination was by and large for CNS, uh, for cardiovascular system, respiratory system, CNS, and abdomen uh, for abdomen. At the end of history and examination, I would like to summarize my case as a 50-year uh, gentleman who came with <clears throat> who came with ulcerative proliferative growth in the uh, <clears throat> inguinous right inguinous cortical region with foul smelling fluid discharge, weight loss, fatigue, uh, consumes tobacco in the form of BD and quid with no bowel bladder uh, complaints and no comorbidities. And on examination, 10 by 15 centimeter ulcerative proliferative lesion could be appreciated in the right inguinous cortical region extending into right lower abdomen with the butted edge, irregular, uh, irregular margin, sorry, it's irregular margin, firm to heart consistency that bleeds on touch in duration reaching beyond the margin with pa uh, palpable fixed right inguinal lymph nodes. Go back to examination. Okay. I think, yeah, you can finish it. Uh, my professional diagnosis is a 50-year gentleman with uh, rapidly progressive ulcerative proliferative growth in the uh, right inguinous cortical region, likely of malignant etiology, differential diagnosis of which I are a squamous carcinoma scrotum and foreignized gangrene. You know, although your case is a little tricky one, but I don't understand why do you have to be so rigid in your flow of examination. It is not a hernia. And that you don't need to rule out. It is not the kind of inguinous total swelling where you should must examine the patient's standing condition. This patient is, we are not able to see the face, that is good. And that is what we should be doing. But we can make out it can't be a comfortable position. And what are you trying to observe? It makes no sense at all to make this patient stand up. So it is ridiculous. Second thing, you missed out that the right lower limb is, the girth is more than the left. You did not describe the examination of the lower limbs, which is where you missed out. You are more bothered about visible cuff impulse, which will be absurd. And more absurd was that you're looking for the visible peristalsis. How would you see peristalsis there? Show the picture. This picture. Now, where would you look for, take your cursor and show me, where would you look for peristalsis here? And there is no scrotum. The hemiscrotum is completely destroyed. Then you mention the base of the ulcer shows blackage. This is the floor of the ulcer. You lost it completely in your trying, in your attempt to, uh, you know, make it into a classical inguinous scrotal swelling, where you're hoping it will be some hernia. You also thought of phonius gangrene here. I mean, I have nothing against it, but that's not. The history, and that's not how a phony is ganging into that. And then you are interchanging margins with the edges at places base with the floor. What is forming the base here? Uh, so the perineum, sir. Uh, the underlying soft tissue and the fascia. So you yes, cannot sir. be commenting on it. That is perineum. I, I agree with you. And not sir, I mentioned floor, sir. I no, I heard it and I noted it down. You mentioned, then you mentioned lower as slough. You mentioned later. So you were using it wherever, in whichever way. That's why I'm trying to tell you. How about the test is on the right side? Did you note it? Yes, sir. Uh, it appears ne gangrenous sir, and necrotic. Take your cursor there. This is the test, sir. Oh, you sorry. don't know. You can't comment. Um, now go for, let's start the first slide. Let's go to the general examination so that I can teach others too. 
examined in valid room after taking implied consent, conscience alert oriented, etc. Performance status is Karnofsky 70 rather than saying KPS is 70. That's not the correct way to put it. The patient's performance status is 70 by Karnofsky scale, which is understandable. In fact, it should be lower. Clinically afebrile and vitals are fine. Immediately after Karnofsky status, I would like to have uh, the performance status. I would like to hear about the hydration and nutritional status. And then you're saying patient has got normal and adequate nutrition. So you should be clear on that. So performance status is 70, Karnofsky. Hydration and nutrition status are normal or adequate according to you. BMI of 70 on account of BMI being seven, 22, sorry, and patient not being anemic, no extras clubbing. I'm not going to discuss that much, but this pedal edema part, you just will see in the picture and I'll show you. Next slide. Now, you can, even with, you know, naked eye, you can make out that the right lower limb is swollen. Hmm. Sir, I have mentioned that the right thigh is edematous, sir. Uh, I have mentioned it during the presentation, sir. Yes, Peter. Uh, you have to describe. You just Mohammed Riyaz's okay. video off, Karne, please. Can we? He's. And uh, please take care. Don't switch on your videos if you are not properly dressed. Now, yeah, stay here. Now, this is the blackish patch you're observing in the floor, which may not necessarily be the testis. So, you're not sure, actually. And you can then mention, I could not localize the testis. In fact, the I'm just now describing what you've written. Inspection scrotum on left side is pushed away towards left side. What is that supposed to mean? The left scrotum appears normal, according to you. Yes, is the overlying skin edematous on the left side also? So you would mention. Yes, sir. It's got edema and it is pushed to the left. But if there is edema, then loss of rigosities is acceptable. There is no growth or ulcer that could be found. There is a large ulcero proliferative growth now of approximately 10 into 15 centimeter. That takes care of it. No? So it is an ulcero proliferative growth. The rest of your description doesn't. And now in an ulcero proliferative growth of this size, would you be looking for visible peristalsis, reducibility, cuff impulse? So that will not be acceptable, no? So it's a 10 into 15 centimeter present in the right inguinal scrotal region, which is acceptable, extending into the right lower. Now, where is the light lower abdomen? There's now no such term as right lower abdomen when you're doing examination. They're all regions. You described that. Show me the next picture. Where is it going into the right lower abdomen? What do you mean by right lower abdomen? Uh, sir, that's in the RAF, right. sir. That's yes, sir. The towards the, uh, or you can yes, see towards the iliac fossa. What do you mean by right lower abdomen? That has got that is not a term at all. And now you can see the edges are reverted at places, and you can see some oscillations in the upper part with you know the Areas of necrosis in the floor, and these are this is not an erythema per se, you know. This would be the angiogenesis of a malignancy which you're observing, and what, there is a discharge visible, and you can see that the right lower limb just see next to the scrotum, there are changes in the adjoining skin. What do you think would be the cause for this? Uh, uh, lymphatic obstruction, sir, and edema. One possibly, edema. possibility is the lymphatic edema. Second is even the discharge from the scrotum would be falling on the skin. So the skin has got those changes also. Dermatitis, okay? And uh, yes. the, those scratch marks, the blackish discoloration. So this edema cannot be missed. And remember, in no inguinal scrotal exam, uh, ex, uh, case or a right or left iliac fossa case, you, you can miss the examination of the lower limbs, which is what is the reason. And you were in a hurry to jump to Foley's here. You have written expensile caps, cuff impulse absent. I mean, this is a where would you look for it? I mean, this is not a hernia per se. And you already described the swelling is hard and two months history. 
and a patient with such a strangulated ulcerated ulcer would present with a different history there will be obstruction history patient will have vomiting the, the story is totally different and you are saying no other visible swelling in the penile perineal or femoral area which is not correct you see the femoral area take your cursor is it normal so mm -hmm. don't unnecessarily it's not normal sir yes so you would say that there is although this needs to be examined and i wish you had taken a video because that would not be difficult patient is in the ward so you could have done it now looking at any skin changes any ulcerations or anything related to that would have been more more handy you should make more presentations otherwise these irrelevant terms will keep coming out unless the case is a straight forward breast thyroid you will have these unnecessary statements that's where one loses the plot so don't do that now next slide i'm correcting everything there is a dorsal bent what about what penis is pushed to the left and i am not able to see that bent you are referring to take your cursor to the no, sir this is the bent i was is that dorsal sorry no. okay now there is this is looking like a ram's horn Yes, Isn't sir. it? Ramps on penis. Ramps on penis. Yes. Which due to happens due to lymphatic blockade, and you already yes, have a lymphatic blockade in the inguinal region, and it is extending into the iliac region, which is what you are saying as lower abdomen. So there is a complete lymphatic blockade associated with this ulcerative proliferative growth. That is why some of these features can be. That is how you can explain. Next slide. and many things now you can read here yourself left side scrotum is thicker than dermatous skin our no induration could be appreciated now this is contradictory you can't comment on it when it's thickened and edematous how would you comment on induration induration is also thickened and firm or uh, you know you left testes could not be palpated separately due to overlying edematous separately means it has to be palpated separately only so you can't appreciate the left testes possibly due to the overlying edematous skin so induration also cannot be appreciated now you are back to the writing one scrotal region also a proliferative growth and 15 extends from base of scrotum inferiorly to the the whole right scrotum is completely destroyed there is no right scrotum hemiscrotum sorry and you mentioned here till asis superiorly so that is the that is the extent you are describing tender and warm to touch now What was tender and what was warm? Uh, so the uh, right the lesion, sir, so the growth, the growth was tender to touch, sir, and was warm, parts, sir. There are two parts to the growth, and they are also based on the history you provided. It started as a swelling which ulcerated, so it has a part which is a hard swelling and an ulcer associated with edges that are inverted, and that's got an indurated base with induration extending beyond the lesion. and uh, floor as some erythematous erythematous areas and there are uh, there is one so you are already looking at you know uh, uh, a malignant uh, lesion or the ulcerative proliferative growth which is likely to be uh, you know responsible for the involvement of these lymph nodes which are hard fixed involving the inguinal region and iliac region that have produced the lymphedema involving the lower limb right side and penis and the scrotum on the left side so it's a complete blockage to the lymphatic flow now induration of the lesion extends beyond this thing okay beyond the margin is not a correct term you'll again confuse it with the margin of the ulcer mm -hmm. now the induration extends beyond the margins of the ulcer that is also not correct it extends beyond the ulcer if you want to say what margin that is also acceptable i am not saying that but you have to complete that statement next slide see look even if it was written i would have covered certain other aspects next slide any other lymph nodes that are palpable move to the next slide ashwin i can't see yes, them yes. edges bleed on touch it is a point why do they bleed on touch and why is it a feature of malignancy 
because sir in malignancies there is neoangiogenesis which leads to formation of uh, uh, which leads to increased vascular supply but these are premature vessels and can easily get damaged on manipulation leading to bleeding fragile vessels which are not completely developed so they tend to bleed everywhere now right testis is gangrenous friable so you can say i cannot appreciate the right testis however there is a gangrenous blackish friable material which is partially sloughed out can be palpated don't bother about meat and raffi here if you can find it intact i have no problem with that now when you say nodes it is again a poor description regional lymphadenopathy because you can't be loose and i mean uh, it it will be casually written so the regional lymph nodes the so right superficial inguinal lymph nodes are palpable how many two in number firm to hard in consistency fixed to what deeper structures non tender and it is important therefore to palpate for the femoral vessels and also for the uh, you know the lower limb which you did not do the girth has to be described how much is the edema has to be described and i will not accept it even if you tell me that patient doesn't have pedal edema on the right side because the blockade is such so therefore you should have examined the limb as a whole and not the hole in the limb that's what i teach regularly be very very clear on that okay and there is no other lymphadenopathy in the on the, uh, on the in the left inguinal region and elsewhere that's the end of the story why did you want to do a dre uh, sir uh, for looking for sir um, infiltration into the perineum sir if we could have extended into the perineum and could have but so, although there is no symptoms or issue of incontinence or constipation but still i want to rule it out in uh, examination sir so if you had answered like i want to exclude involvement of urethra penile examination becomes very important you had not done any examination of the penis which you just described as curved downwards or whichever way it's a rams on penis which needs to be examined you should have described about the uh, the external meatus you should have described about any induration in the corpora you should have described about any ulceration on the penile shaft and the examination of penis will be mandatory here and when you are doing the examination of urethra it starts from the external urethral meatus and you examine the penile urethra perineal urethra and of course prostatic urethra and for that you do a dre so dre is for all these purposes also to look for any ascending or retrograde infections which can produce features although the patient is not symptomatic for any urinary complaints patient is catheterized so there has to be a reason Um, it was done for uh, preventing infection, sir, uh, from outside. Uh, since there is a fungating mass. Now this fungating mass is lying absolutely bang on urethra. Now there is no, there is no intervening much tissue. And what saves urethra from getting involved so easily in phonias and other infections? Sir, the layer of bug tissue that uh, comes from the abdomen covers it. Sir. So we need to keep the part dry. Um, and i mean we need to take out the slough we need to take care of all the dead tissue and we need to protect the urethra uh, therefore we catheterize because later on they may develop urinary fistula it is possible fistula. let's move i would have been interested in examination of the abdomen more than anything else and you described it all but that's okay examination of the spine is important here examination of the workhouse group of lymph node is important here and as i am saying i am repeatedly re saying it for everybody examination of the lower limbs becomes very very important especially here the you know if you look at your swelling it is sitting bang on the femoral vessels and that it can involve them any time and clinically how would you know whether it's involved or not show me the picture again and tell us take the cursor there no no this previous picture was fine yes Now there is no way you can palpate for femoral here, no. So how would you establish it is patent? Um, Sir, distal pulsations and. Therefore, how would you pul 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 palpate distally unless you examine the limb? Therefore, it is necessary to examine the limb as a whole, and there is no question of missing it. Is that clear? Now, if you really look at it, the growth is just about to invade into the penile. region and maybe it is involving the root of the penis uh, and one has to be extremely extremely careful in saying that it is not involving you getting my point so it's a malignant wound looks like a malignant wound 
because there is an underlying malignancy which is ulcerated through the skin. So it is it will have complex, complex issues to discuss. Let's move on to your provisional diagnosis. Okay, you can go back. Let me cover all the slides for the benefit of everybody before that. This next slide. Now, I don't want to correct it. 50 year gentleman with ulceroproliferative growth. I don't know what nonsense you've written here again. You already mentioned ulceroproliferative. And again, you're writing ulcerative here. There's so much of inconsistency in your writing and description. Totally different. So now you've already described, you mentioned in your examination it to be, you're mentioning on examination ulceroproliferative growth. So why, what is the problem now? Calling it ulceroproliferative growth. That's a summary of it. 50 year gentleman with a with an ulcer 10 to 15 centimeter ulcer proliferative growth in the rest the rest of the story is not a part of your summary you're summarizing your case now and the rest you've already described in your history why are you repeating it here with a ulcer proliferative growth in the right inguinal scrotal region extending onto the right lower abdomen can you believe it you mentioned anterior superior ill spine there and again here it comes out as lower abdomen there's nothing like lower and upper abdomen in science we have regions, we have described them as various regions, right? With inverted edges. Now, you can't make out the lower abdomen has inverted edges or what? So, it's total waste of, you know, description of all the effort. So, 10 to 15 centimeter ulcero proliferative growth extending from the right inguinal scrotal region to the right anterior spilic spine. The growth is... Uh, Ulcero proliferative growth always has averted edges. What is an ulcero proliferative growth? Mm, sir, um, ulcero proliferative cauliflower shaped uh, lesion, sir, with uh, averted edges. So you're describing it again. You're mentioning it as ulcero proliferative means its edges are still proliferating. It was a swelling like a volcano, it has opened up and it is still growing. So when it is growing, the edges are inverted and yes. probably malignant. All that stuff. So this rest of the story makes very little impact on me. Move to the diagnosis. So please correct it. You can't be inconsistent. You said something there, something here. Give me the diagnosis now. Let's move on. Yes. Likely of malignant etiology. It's common. Now, when you're saying likely of malignant etiology, how can corneous gangrene be a differential diagnosis here? Sorry, sir. Less likely, sir, but I had to keep... No, but then you uh, already mentioned... In the differential the... diagnosis, sir. So, no, you uh... mentioned likely of malignant etiology, no? Yes, so can there be any other malignancy here which is a differential diagnosis? That makes more sense. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, other, um, other malignancies common in this region are, sir, uh, Bowen's disease, uh, extra memory pages. That's, that's all, Bow Bowen's disease will again be like, I mean, forget about skin cancers. Squamous is one of the skin cancers. It can be any of those skin cancers, no? Which includes squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma, basal cell. And then precancers, you mentioned Bowen's, etc. They don't become, they are not frank cancers. Then can it be something else, something from the lymph nodes which has come out and ulcerated? Or maybe it's a, a rarely a rare possibility. It could be a, a melanoma with the blackish and the, the things that, the, the, that you observed. So basically skin lesions, all of them can be there. Phoneus gangrene is not a, your diagnosis now with the description you have already given. But yes, phoneus gangrene can happen uh, against the background of a malignancy or it can result from a malignancy. I have, we have published a case of phoneus gangrene and the squamous cell carcinoma developing in phoneus gangrene. But the two can coexist. It is possible. Okay. So I've tried to cover up all the parts in the history and examination. Sometimes the case is tricky, but don't make every inguinoscrotal swelling into a hernia. It can be another case. That is why this case was put. Because you will start describing the same thing. Then you will come to reducibility, cuff impulse, expensile cuff impulse, visible peristalsis, visible pulsations. While you will miss out the examination of the lower limb, lymph. oral pulsations, and the lymph nodes examination. All the lymph nodes need to be examined. It's actually a lymph node mass underlying. 
the ulcer. The ulcer has appeared later and there is a swelling which has happened. So, squamous cell carcinoma does not present as a swelling and then become an ulcer. That is the reason why I was asking. Mm -hmm. And is there any benign possibility? Um, mm, All right, I'll ask you, why do you say it is a malignant etiology? Um, sir, uh, points in history and examination, sir. In history, uh, there is rapid progression of the growth over the past two months. There is an ulcer with sanguineous discharge and bleeding also, sir. And... Uh, uh, in examination, sir, all the points, including uh, including the uh, aberrated edges, bleeding edges, uh, the slough in the center of the ulcer, and uh, also the induration which extends beyond the margin, all these are in points suggesting of favoring uh, malignancy over benign etiology. I agree with you. And if you have that high uh, suspicion, then you it's not, there's no harm in looking for testis and looking for the cord. It is possible, if you go back to the picture again, since it's a class, so we have, yes. It is possible that one of these swellings is testis. That you, which you're observing, because I can't use your cursor. So where you're finding the multiple swellings, you never know. And uh, you, because you can't see, feel the cord here, you can't feel the testis here. So there are, there are many possibilities. So you keep everything clear. But the history is too terribly short. Too so what, uh, yes, sir, please. So what I thought was, sir, sir, this, sir, this lesion that we can see over here might have infiltrated the cord, which had led to ischemia and led to the gangrene of the testes. That's, That's what a possibility. You are, you may be right. I'm, I'm not denying it. Uh, and if that is testis, since you, I can't make out a swelling there, if you palpated it, and I have not, there's absolutely no problem. All I'm saying is, therefore, it needs to be coming out in your examination so that the examiner gets an idea that you thought of it as a swelling which is infiltrated deeper. And squamous cell carcinoma won't come as a swelling. It will be an ulcer. It's a skin lesion, no? Mm -hmm. Squamous cell carcinoma here would be a surface problem. In the oral cavity, it's in the depth problem. You're getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it yes, will be a problem yes, yes, on the surface. It won't come as a swelling under, underneath, which will become an ulcer. There can be something else. So the possibilities are immense. It could just be a lymph node mass due to... Is it possible that it could be due to tuberculosis or lymphoma, which is given way? It's a possibility. Lymphoma can be a malignancy. It could just be lymph nodes which have ulcerated now. But yes, the skin has those classical features of it, having those proliferative changes. Now, ulceroproliferative versus proliferative is often asked. You know, if there is an ulcer, which is <coughs> edges that are, you know, just the ulcer and the edges are proliferating. That is where they are growing outwards. That's a proliferative growth. Ulceroproliferative is a swelling was there, which has opened up, ruptured, and now it is growing. Let's move. How do you do now? Let's proceed because we have to save on time. Just one hour we wanted to take. How do you proceed now? You've given us some story. I hope you'll, you'll make those corrections in the case, uh, in your history and also in the examination. And students, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer. Because as I'm taking uh, this class, I'm trying to remember as much as possible with the case that he's presenting. But you can ask any question relating to that. Now, how do you proceed? Let's, let's move. Um, sir, I would like to proceed to uh, investigate my patient. To confirm the diagnosis, to stay, support and stay, support the diagnosis and stage the patient, and to um, treat the patient. patient. Can you stage a patient? Uh, stage the, the so, 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 so it can't be speaking irrelevant things, no. <laughs> so investigations yes, to confirm the diagnosis, to support the diagnosis, to stage the disease, yes, and to treat the patient. Treat the patient. So what do we do for that? Let us take the. Keep that picture over. Forget about this slide now. It has no meaning. Yeah. Now you keep talking. Sir, to confirm my diagnosis, I would like to take an incision biopsy from the head, sir. Show us the place. Uh, sir, from uh, from the head, sir. Why from and the head? Towards the distal, sir, from the edge because uh, there is slough and necrotic material in the center part, sir. That is one reason. And the other reason is edge is the maximum prolifer proliferating area of the ulcer, sir. 
so the yield will be better sir yes that's correct so put that first because i didn't ask you why not from the center you answered that first so answer the question properly the question was why take from the edge because that's where the maximum proliferative activity is happening then why not from the center because that's where the necrosis is so you want to see the proliferative uh, you know tissue and that's why you'll take an incisional biopsy what else will you do <coughs> sir once the uh, diagnosis confirmed sir um, then i would like to uh, investigation to uh, stage the disease sir which will include uh, investigation for n and m sir tnm for for n and m for n i would like to do sir an, an ultrasound which will help in uh, identifying the uh, lymph nodes and also so surrounding tissue so that you don't commit mistakes you try to speak quickly and then mistakes happen take take your time speak slowly nobody is rushing you so that you can think and answer carry on yes sir uh, the ultrasound will also help me in uh, doing a fnac from the lymph node which would help in um, uh, finding any tumor deposits uh, from the inner lymph node sir uh, following which i would like to examination since it will be soon what are the ultrasound features of a malignant lymph node sir a uh, normal uh, lymph node on ultrasound is oblong in shape sir due to the uh, central uh, necrosis and proliferation it will become spherical and malignancy and there is also loss of uh, hilum fatty hilum due to infiltrating vessels and uh, also there can be calcifications and necrotic areas in the lymph nodes sir well, that's not complete um all students can answer in the chat box Shape, size, uh, uh, cystic area, heterogeneous cystic area, heter heterogeneous cystic, sir, heterogeneous cystic, uh, infiltration of fa fatty islam. Um. Students, please answer in the chat box you, all these questions that I am asking him. You can also answer. All of you should do that. Now, okay, size may increase. You are right. Shape may change uh, from oblong to spheroidal. You can have central hypoechoic area, which is an area of necrosis. loss of halo which is extra capsular spread and you can have uh, increased vascularity and you have that fatty hilum getting replaced and it's not circular shagun it is spheroidal uh, no it's not more oblong than spheroidal it is more spheroidal than oblong oblong is a normal lymph node and uh, then you have <coughs> yes now Richa has put it down. Taller than wider is not correct here. That's not for the lymph node. Uh, rest I have described. Hard is not a part of ultrasound, so that's not correct. So Richa, that's not a correct description. I've already given the description. So the size would increase to reasonable size, but in the presence of a primary, any size is significant. Number two, from oblong, it will become a spheroidal shaped uh, swelling. and it left central hypoechoic area which may be which is an area of necrosis and the halo sign with the extra capsular you know, extension the capsule is gone so halo is gone fatty alum is replaced by the vascular invasion and you will have heteroechogenic uh, appearance as you correctly mentioned now so i would have covered it up in t only T tells you about it could well be just the nodes, right? So we'll take an edge biopsy, and there is an important thing here that it is usually contaminated. So we need to give it a good wash. Patient should be on antibiotics, and you should take it from a healthier. I mean, sorry, sorry, no area is healthy from an area without slough, so that you can get no contaminants. Otherwise, many a times the report comes out as equivocal, and in this case, you can be liberal with the edge. Take out a good tissue. so that pathologist has no difficulty in making a diagnosis in the same go ashwin also on guided fna can be done because you need to know whether it's a skin is necrosed because of the primary which is a lymph node or the lymph nodes are increased or in size because of the primary being in the skin so we don't really know so ultrasound happens at the same time which is an extension of clinical examination and you can do a ultrasound guided core biopsy so that you can get tissue diagnosis fna may be confusing mm. and you can get a diagnosis done how do you stage cutaneous squamosal skin squamosal carcinomas ashwin according to the agcc 8th edition the oral cavity 
the skin are totally different staging now you know oral head and neck is divided head and neck is divided into the hpv and non hpv type of squamous cell carcinomas uh, we already discussed it in the oral uh, many times during the scrubs and otherwise for skin what is the what is the division what is the tnm uh sir uh, t size is based on the uh, size of the lesion sir this is less than 2 2 to 5 and more than 5 cm in size t1 t2 t3 and no, t4 wrong. is infiltration wrong. process it's wrong don't waste yes. much time you should have read it when you are presenting it it's not 5 it's 4 5 is in breast and then there's more to it so you should have started with in size 2 all the students please write in the chat box so that we don't waste time there the tnf staging what is the node staging for squamous cell carcinoma please write the t stage meanwhile he's answering the node one start answering sir shagun n1 n yes you carry on there has to be an n0 also no mention n0 first sorry uh, okay n0 is when no nodes could be identified sir n1 n2 n3 sir n1 is ipsilateral nodes mobile n2 is uh, bilateral or contralateral nodes which are mobile n3 is fixed nodes either ipsilateral or contralateral sir and the size is important so do read it up so I won't waste time doing the tnm here because you, anybody can read it it doesn't there's no rocket science there uh, and you will do ultrasound for that we need a ct scan right to stage it contrast and ct scan of the abdomen and pelvis yes, including yes. the groin and lower part pelvis. and you will do the ultrasound examination should include penile urethra examination corpora cavernosa and others everything should be examined in one go and abdomen is also examined for the m which is metastatic distant metastasis to the liver to the to whether there is a site or not what is more important in the doppler which you didn't mention is the in the ultrasound is doppler which you did not mention uh, sir doppler uh, can also help the t has one thing missing otherwise you are fine t0 no tumor tis in situ less than 2 cm or equal to more than 2 cm less than equal to 4 cm more than 4 fine small vesicles and testes t4 but it may not be it you you are confusing the two i'm just asking about the skin cancer so you can correct it because there is no question of small vesicles and testes if the skin is in the leg the squamous cell carcinoma of the extremities has got a different staging anyway yes you are answering ashwin Sir, sir, Doppler would help in uh, uh, looking for the increased vascularity associated with the primary. Also helps us in looking for the normal vasculature of the adjacent structures like the testicular artery. Uh, also can be assessed. See here, your trouble is you can't see the you can't you didn't comment on the ileex that you will see. You did comment on the femorals. You will be because you cannot clinically. So ultrasound becomes uh, gavara bhav. Now you're right. the four extra dermal tissues which means cartilage muscle and bone granted so which will in this case would include the cord or it will include the testes and other uh, other parts in that region adjoining area that would make it t4 correct now um, so you would need to do a doppler to look for ultrasound for any metastasis ascites other lymph nodes then relationship of this mass with the underlying major vessels and the contralateral inguinal region and pelvic lymph nodes everything and you've done the ct now what do you think is the stage for your patient obviously t4 and 3 and m you have to find out clinically m0 right now so it will be ct and m but you would like to find out and with this stage since we have another 5 to 7 minutes to finish it we've done a long case as well as we could cover it it's a tough difficult one so don't worry you've done well i'm just trying to put your thoughts in place so that you can have continuity in your description otherwise you know the answering can be a challenge you may answer haphazardly which is not correct so what do you think would be the management based on your stage now you told me the stage 
i would like since it's a malignancy i would like to discuss it in mdt so and once after discussion sir since it's a uh, stage 3 disease uh, we could opt for neoadjuvant chemotherapy um, there is no role of neoadjuvant radiation because of the necrotic uh, content of the um, malignancy our neoadjuvant chemotherapy with platin based or bleomycin based regimen can be used uh, and <coughs> surgery can be planned sir we should be a wide local excision Uh, earlier it used to be two centimeter margin. Now it has come down to no tumor or ning or even most micro surgery can be done to preserve the vital structures. And uh, yeah, and for and reconstruction after that reconstruction can be done, sir, with the help of labs or grafts. Well, don't use the term no role. Radiation. So say radiation. Radiation still has a role. There is a palliative days, dose of radiation when there is a bleeding ulcer or a bleeding malignant ulcer or ulcer which is malignant and it is causing nuisance in the form of you know the one bleeding of course and it is expanding so you can use palliative radiation but when you have nothing else to do i agree with the new adjuvant chemotherapy concept so say limited role don't say no role okay and um, yes you will put the patient on new adjuvant chemotherapy and then you will go for if possible that's what i will plan if possible if the patient has responded one would be lucky but i think the important thing that you missing out that this patient should be managed as a whole so care of the patient in terms of nutrition antibiotics local hygiene the hygiene is poor then local dressings how do you manage this malignant wound it's fungating how do you manage it uh, sir with uh, multiple dressings sir of uh, bitern and hydrogen peroxide wash and uh, care should be taken so that it doesn't get infected with maggots which often happen in these wounds <coughs> and also uh, overall hygiene of the patient sir well uh, i wish you had answered that we use it every day in our ward so you have seen it being used also metrogel dressings we use for anaerobic metrogel the cause of foul smell here is anaerobes so we do use metrogel dressings we use some other dressing biological dressings which take care of the slough but importantly there when you say maggots a lot of times patients coming with maggots have no slough left because the maggots eat it off but they these are these this is not what you want there is something called as maggot therapy which is not done here okay you don't need which is not to be done in this case and some students would mention about vac therapy i've heard it from some people vac is contraindicated in a malignant wound because vac will produce malignant toxic environment which will lead to proliferation of cancer cells so that is harmful so even when it becomes absolutely granulating kind of absolutely healthy looking you should not be i you, I'm, i'm sorry about using the term granulation because granulation is happening in healthier tissues it doesn't happen in malignant so it is care of the patient in terms of nutrition and antibiotic cover two iv fluids and adequate uh, you know care of the limb so care of the patient care of the limb and care of the ulcer limb needs to be kept elevated we need to provide some support or some kind of uh, lymphedema pumps to take care of lack of collection because stasis is going to cause more problem the limb is going to be difficult to salvage and do you know a lot of time you must have read in your books also a lot of time these patients are relieved of their agony by invasion or infiltration into the femoral vessels and they die immediately so you have to protect against any uh, blow out of the femorals okay so take care of the wound by using some people use charcoal dressings also which adsorb the you know the foul smelling gases uh, which make it difficult socially for the patient to be even the relatives don't want to stay next the fellow patients start objecting to it so it can be a challenge so to resect it can be uh, a challenge also but we should make an effort and naturally we'll have to take consent for the removal of the uh, you know the all the yes. the margin has to be clear so one has to be very very clear that the patient is willing for whatever it takes and as i mentioned if they are just nodes if the diagnosis is different then the therapy would be mostly with this kind of a presentation uh, we will be using um, systemic therapies rather than local therapies and in terms of local cutting therapy cutting arms we have surgery and radiation surgery has limited role right now the radiation has limited role right now so we'll have to use systemic therapy yes i mentioned about it the biological dressings are superior 
because they do include the care of the um, Raul, you asked that question, so I'm answering. Raul, Sharma. biological dressings are better. But if you don't have that facility, you can use metrogel. We find that very useful. The odor, you know, the, the odor becomes better. I mean, the patient becomes uh, acceptable around. The biological dressings are very expensive, although they are better. That's the case. Now, if there are more questions, I'll be happy to take. Varun. Sir, how should such a lesion be measured? From the margin of the indurated area or where the skin has ulcerated? Uh, also, should we measure it only on the surface in case of... Very good question, Varun. Uh, you should measure the indurated area. That's the disease. If you understand the disease, it was a swelling which is ulcerated. So, ulcer is the tip of the iceberg. So, you must measure the entire entire swelling. Okay? But if it was just an ulcer and it had an induration, again the indurated one is measured. I hope, Varun, you got my answer. Anyone who's asked a question, if I've answered, please write that you've got it because otherwise I would keep thinking there is some issue. A Chetan has asked, sir, in necrotizing soft tissue infections of perineum, how often can we, can there be a coexisting? It's rare, but can happen. Whether it causes or or is the result of malignancy, one does not know because necrotizing soft tissue infection is an infection. Usually, uh, it is a synergistic infection which has both aerobes and anaerobes. <clears throat> and therefore, if you look at them, they can happen anywhere where, you know, the fascia gets involved. Or synergistic infections means aerobes and anaerobes are symbiotic in their functioning. Aerobes eat away all the oxygen and they leave the dead tissue. Then anaerobes can flourish in the absence of oxygen and create a situation where they keep contributing to each other's growth. And this grows along the facial planes. So the cause could be anything underlying. It could be an infection. It could be a malignancy. Varun has asked another question. So that's how we define it. In the, that's correct. So that's how we will... I'm not able to read it. Before I read it, moves um, on. That's that how we define uh, it in the examination. The length and the breadth. Width. Uh, yes, that's correct. Rahul, sir, in this case, when do we do excision that will be... Uh, I am not getting the question. In this case, when we do excision, what will we about... What will we do about penis? I think I answered that. Unless involved, we'll save it. And on the medial side, we'll try to be more conservative. We can also follow the Mohs... Uh, concept Thank here. You. And as uh, Ashwin very correctly mentioned, it's no longer that one centimeter margin, three-dimensional, which is what it used to be. You'd get no tumor on the ink, which is what is acceptable, but that is difficult to get grossly. So grossly, you should aim at at least one centimeter. But the barriers can be exploited, like Buck's fascia, if it is intact, you don't need to take out the penis. You can take the fascia off, so that will be taken care. But whether it will be a functional penis or not, can be a challenge. So that is where you need to take the consent. But don't remove it just because, um, you know, you think it is falling in that one centimeter. Yes, Ashwin? Sir, in a coexisting foreignness and malignancy, how will we go about the management, sir? Like, what will we treat first? And how do we... Uh... See, first of all, we, the management of um, malignancy is a priority for, the, for many reasons. One, uh, it's a it's a more important disease, but more importantly, it is the cause of phonius here. So if this is causing phonius, so you can't treat phonius without treating it. And remember, the best treatment for malignant wounds, I think there is a YouTube video of mine where I've delivered a talk on dressings for malignant wounds. And I've described malignant wounds. There is a chapter also I've written in a, uh, I think, Elsevier book or a JP book, I don't know, <clears throat> on malignant wounds. You can search, you'll find it on PubMed where I've described as to, or maybe Sukriti can provide the link in the group, um, uh, there is a description as to how do we manage coexisting phonius gangrene. In fact, the question was, what Chetan was asking, covers the phonius gangrene. Phonius gangrene is a necrotizing soft tissue infection involving the perineum and scrotum, right? Where the testes lie shamelessly exposed. 
And the test is escape involvement. Why did the escape involvement, um, Ashwin? In and the tunica albuginea layer over the test is pro protects us from the uh, infection, sir. I can't give you any mark for that, although you heard it. So, in fact, in fact, I'll deduct for that. Others can also attempt an answer. Students can answer that. Why in phonious gangrene, the test is escapes involvement? The reasons are, it's, a, it's got a dual blood supply. <clears throat> One is the testicular artery, which is coming directly from the abdominal aorta. And um, the other one is the cremastric coming from there. So because of the dual blood supply, it escapes. And the second reason is, of course, tunica. But I said, I won't give it to you because I have already answered that many times uh, in the previous presentation that you had. So phonius, is, you may have the testis escaping. That's what is written, you know, testis escape shamelessly, deny shamelessly exposed. So that's about it. Bugs fascia is the protection there. Any other question before we can close it? I don't think I'll take the other questions today. I'll take it possibly in a day or two. And uh, uh, you can post in the group what all you would like me to cover. We'll create a curriculum and we'll space it out and we'll finish it in two or three weeks. So let me know so that you have a crash course and you can prepare yourself for the exam. And uh, there's nothing else you need. We'll also give you the, uh, maybe this week you will get the app of uh, all the scrub classes and everything. We're putting it in an app so we'll have everything available. And you can just go through it and you can go, go ahead. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any more questions, Ashwin? Or we are done? Thank you. Sir. The last minute I'm asking all of you, if there is any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, do allow me to close it. Uh, if you think we are covered... Are there any questions, Sukriti, from the YouTube group? Because there are quite a lot of people there also. This time we were trying the YouTube thing. No, sir. No questions from there? Okay, so can we... Whatever questions were there have been answered, sir. All right, thank you. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed getting it to you. It has been some time that uh, we interacted. That was a short notice, but now we'll do it regularly. I assure you, promise you. Right? So, thank you all. God bless you. Prepare well for your exams. And you mentioned only four topics in your request. So, I'm not... Neck dissections, I think the operative videos, we can take almost all operative procedures. Uh, antibiotics. So... Oh. Let's talk some surgery, man. Get to come out with questions which are more surgical. We can put them across. Antibiotics also can be covered. Don't worry. It's useful. So please write it down and put it in the group. Abdominal lump. So take Richa. You can take it and present it. That's the best way to go for it. Abdominal lump. So if you're willing, you can always prepare it and you will be the next to present it. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Prepare hard. And you will all do well. Don't worry.